Right, we'll go. So, yeah, um, today we're going to look at attributes and how to uh, deal with those, what they do, and things to look out for. Um, and this is especially important uh, considering how we're moving forward trying to work in the future from a, a standard template that's the same for every every project. So we're all going to be... Uh, Think things should be consistent throughout every project we do. So rather than um, there being strange layers and stuff, uh, different materials, they should all be coordinated across everything in the future. So it makes it easy to manage. Otherwise, it's a nightmare. So um, attributes, if you don't or if you're not aware, are um, all the things like, oh, where are we? Um, That's up here in options, element attributes. So it's the things like our layer settings, our line types, our pins, pin sets, fill type surfaces, building materials, composite structures, profiles, zones, um, and some markup styles. Um, so that all of these basically can be adjusted individually, like if you just want to deal with layers, so you can come into layers here and open up and you can manage your layer settings and layer combinations from here. So we can go through and change anything um, to what we want or add layers by uh, adding new or creating new layer combinations. So if we want something different, these while we're going to be trying to set up all the layer combinations to, to take care of most of the typical view sets that you need in a project, there's quite often times where you're working on something and you might just want like all the, the heavy data hidden that's not important to you. So you can create a new layer set by turning off and on um, various layers. You can also choose to make some of them um, invisible. Like so you'll see the outline, but you'll see through it still. So if you want to, if you want to sort of see an internal um, view of a room but you don't want to see the walls, you can go and turn the walls to invisible and then you could create a new one here. Um, and that um, sits down there and then you can flip into that whenever you want. Um, Things to remember with layer combinations is that all of these settings, lock, the lock, the view, and the transparency apply only to the particular layer combinations that you've got. So while you might go into one layer combination and quite often we lock, say, the um, module lines, the, the, the grid lines, um, just so we've locked that there, and I'll update that there. So whenever I go into this Tony's combination, that's always locked. But if I happen to go into something else, um, it then takes the properties of the new combination, so it will unlock. So we're in the past, if you locked a layer in ARCHICAD, it locked on all of the layers. Um, and you could safely go ahead and move stuff, um, stretch things, and know that the lock stuff remained there. Now, you just got to keep in the back of your mind that um, it's not necessarily locked, even if you think you've locked it. So before doing a um, multi-story stretch or something like that, check that things that you don't want to move are locked um, just by opening up the combinations. Um, what else have we got? So back in here. So a lot of these things, once they're set up for the project, you don't really need um, to get in and alter them yourself, but they're just they're, there are times when um, you just need to do something different, um, and you don't know what well, you need to be able to know how to do it. So lines, um, basically all the, the standard line type, line types are set up in the file. Um, you can actually get in and edit those by you know moving. These little markers. So we can make them bigger. We can make them scale dependent, things like that. Um, we can also 
copy those. So if I copy that now and paste, oh, it's just replace the one. So now this is what I was trying to get there too. That. So now we can, you can even create like gap lines and things like that. So if you need a special particular type of line, you can do it in here. Um, set all these things up like that. Um, and so to create a new one, obviously new, and then you come in here and give it a name. Uh, and you got a choice of whether it's a dash line, a symbol line, or a duplicate. So if I duplicate, I can duplicate obviously the one that I had selected, and then I could go in and manipulate it however I needed to do that. Um, another way to create a line, a special line, is um, just say, like in this project that I'm working on, we have a line which goes something like this. So we have a we had a need for a line that was a basically a square alternating shape. So to create a particular line, we can then draw it in two D basically how we want it, and then copy what we've got and element attributes lines. Create a new one. Uh, I think it's the right way. <laughs> And paste, and it will um, paste the, the lines that I've copied in there, and then we can bring it closer, adjust the scale or the size, and then it creates our line up here. So if I go OK, and if I go now and choose that line, we've got that line created just as we need it. So there's occasionally those times when you sit around and think, oh, I need to show this a certain way, and um, someone wants me to show it this, but I don't know how to do it. Quite often, creating a special line is not that we want to do too much in 2D, but it's a nice, handy way of, of doing that. Let's get rid of those. Uh, what else have we got in attributes? Um, the pens, like we can go and adjust the pen colors manually to what we need. We're, again, we've got those basically set up into the sets that we want, but um, occasionally, again, there's a need, like, you know, again, you might want a, maybe you want to show a thick line showing a pathway or something. A nice simple way of doing that is actually to go and grab a pen or create one here. So if we went into here, um, choose a color, so we want to make it green the way in and set our pen weight. So we could make that you know, five millimeters thick um, so that when we uh, draw that line, uh, now I've got to find it. So now when we draw that line, it comes out nice and thick. So, so rather than trying to you know create a uh, a pathway, say with a fill or something like that, which is always time consuming, especially when you've got curves and shapes. You know, you can create a thick line and um, make your pathway with that. So if you were to go into like the polyline. It would then just follow around nice and quickly. Um, fills again, just like pen, uh, not pens, um, lines. We've got the basic fills all set up, but um, 
occasionally there's a need for a particular type of fill that you want to put across something um, or as a cover on a texture or something like that. Um, again, you do the same um, same as with the line, so you can go and uh, create your shape. So if we were to say, I don't know, um, like a zigzag pattern maybe of some sort. Oops, yeah. oh, no, okay, we'll, we'll do it simple. We'll just oh. just so we want to. Probably the best way to use this unit is a tile pattern. So if we wanted a particular tile pattern, um, so it's yeah, twelve hundred grid thing. Oh, okay. meter grid. So if we go a meter, ah, hit this new multiply tool. <laughs> this used to be so simple. Righto, so we can just say create a pattern. So we just again copy that. Options, element attributes, fill types, uh, new, and we'll call this uh, tiles 1.0 by 1.0. And choose symbol fill and paste. So then that puts in here our pattern. Uh, if you want to set it up so that you can see it when, uh, you know, in the little thumbnail, when you pull down your um, fill types, up this thing up here, at the moment it's got a funny pattern, so to, to fix that up, you just come in here and draw on it, um, basically a tile pattern. Ah. That one there, fill those up, and get rid of that one, that one, and then. Ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. and down through there. So that now our. Thumbnail will show up. And so then we can choose whether this fill that we've created should apply to just typical standard drafting fills or as a cover fill or as just a cut fill. So, um, so the uh, tile pattern, we probably just need cover fill and maybe a drafting fill. We can set um, spacings and stuff like that. So that's. If, if you've set this up um, to the right spacings, you probably don't need to fiddle around too much with anything else in here. So you can just go, okay. And then now when we go to our fill, fill type, um, what did I call it? Tile. Yeah. Where have you gone? There we go, tiles one by one. And it wouldn't hurt to put a bit of that. So then we've got our tile pattern ready to go. Um, just it's not associated with um, attributes, but you realize that too, if you've created a tile pattern like that, that you can then manipulate the start point of the pattern so that if the shape was irregular, yeah. 
and you were showing a tile tile roof that you can then um, use the orientation thing here to set where the tile pattern will actually start from. So you could, you know, if you knew the actual dimensions, so say we need, we want to start half a tile in each way, so we can, X is 500 plus, and Y is 500 plus. So our pattern starts at that point. And also, if we wanted to rotate it in any way, we can use that to manipulate the um, orientation. So, go okay, to so the next one. Surfaces, so this is all our um, colors and things like that. So we can go in here again, they're all generally set up. Um, so you can choose from those. And it's a simple case, again, of, of a new one. You can create whatever you want. So you can duplicate something that's already there or choose one from a catalog. Um, So I don't think I've got anything though to import that from. Oh, what have we got here? So yeah, so maybe we just want to create a, a wooden ceiling. So we'll create that one there, okay. So it brings all those parameters in. So that's basically out of the standard ArchiCAD library, but you can do this with anything you can, you can grab a picture of a, a wall that you've seen while you've been traveling somewhere and bring that in as a JPEG um, basically down here. So you can search for any any photo that you want um, to apply to, to that surface. So um, you're not limited just by what's in, in the ARCHICAD library. Um, so then we've got like things like the surface color. So you've got the engine settings here, which, so the basic one is like um, just the simple 3D stuff and OpenGL. And that's, sorry, that's the um, basic, basic rendering engine. And this is OpenGL. So this is a typical 3D view that you go into um, and move around. Um, so you take, you can set the surface color from in here to anything you want. And that there is showing the photo rendering option. But so when you d pull this one up in as an OpenGL, like a 3D model, it'll, it'll show the surface is purple. But when you go to photo render, it would show with the um, pattern and everything overlaid. You can set the transparency. So you wanted a material that's like partly see through, you can see the transparency here as well. So from nothing to completely see through. Um, so it's useful for patterns on glass and things like that. Um, you can set how shiny and how reflective it's going to be. So um, if it's a like a gloss finish or something, you can set that up quite high. Or if it's a dull finish, we can set them low. You can add a fill so. Basically, if you put, say, a ceiling slab in and you can add a fill for the pattern for the ceiling slab so that when you place the ceiling slab in the drawing, you can tell it to um, pick up the, uh, the fill from the material that you've used rather than having to overlay a fill on top of a slab to create a um, ceiling pattern or something like that. Um, options, what do we got? Building materials, now these are the sort of more the core, core part of ARCHICAD which create like uh, the composite, um, straight to the rack and two that we call it here, so the, um, the walls which have say concrete and um, some insulation and a Kipsa Levy finish, this is where we pull the um, core components. Now, again, we are probably going to have not a lot of need to be getting in here and fiddling around with this because once the template's set up, it's basically how we want it to be used. Um, but if you ever do need to, there are um, things in here. So like each 
material has um, a priority. Now this operates the um, what do they call it in the like in the cross sections and the details where the fill priorities. So uh, in a composite might have four or five different um, materials to make it up, and they may be uh, crossing. So like a floor slab with a with a wall over the over which you want the exterior finish of the wall to go to the bottom of the floor slab, but you only want the core of the wall to go stop on top of the floor slab. This is where um, all these priori priorities are set up and override uh, which one is, is going is more important. So the bigger the number, the more important it is. Um, so it will then override anything of a, a lesser priority. Um, what else? There's, at the moment, we're not really using these physical properties as something that we still need to study up a wee bit on ourselves and go, but this will, this can give us the ability to use these properties for um, the energy calculations and things like that in our projects. So we're still sort of discussing with the powers that be how far into that we really want to get. Um, and again, that's this is just made up of basic fills that we've already got in our fill library and um, surface finishes from our standard surface finish library. Where did you go? Oh, over here, sorry. So profile manager is for like um, custom beams, special wall shapes. Maybe we've got a wall with a um, no, cornice or maybe we want to make a special cornice or um, a specially shaped column, maybe a um, fluted column of some sort or, uh, and even the handrails now and in library parts, we can use this. So uh, steel sections as well. So it comes again with a lot of preset stuff, typical construction type stuff. Um, and then we can create our own by just clicking on new. Um, Okay, and it will take us to our own little um, worksheet area. And to create a complex profile, we need to use the fill tool. So we need to choose a fill. Um, just, just say, what's my mouse? We will use, uh, what are we going to use? Say something. Oh, concrete was just a basic concrete. We'll just use some concrete. Um, maybe we're going to make a odd shaped beam. So we go into here, we go find the origin. Now the important point when you make a complex profile is to work with the origin point because this sets where it is um, placed relative height wise. So um, just say we want to make a We'll make a round beam, so we can come into here. We'll make that, make our shape, and then use because you can't make a circle out of a fill. So you need to um, actually draw the circle first, and then magic wand it into the circle, and then you can delete the delete circle. So now we're left with a round concrete beam, say. So we tell it what we want that to apply to. So we want to apply to a beams and maybe columns. We can tell it, um, we can make it stretchable horizontally or vertically. So if we've got like a, uh, a shape with a bit more complexity to it than just our circular beam, we can tell it that if we stretch it horizontally, it will still retain the same basic shape but it will just stretch either horizontally or vertically uh, we can set whether it's a 
a core element or um, a finish. And then we can come into here and why are we not done? <laughs> So this, oh yeah, sorry, so we have to have select the um, component, the, the fill, and then we can tell it whether that fill is a core part of that object or, a, or just a finish. Okay, cheers. Um, and then we can also give it a uh, standard surface override. Um, we'll make this one red. We can set the line types, and then we click OK, and then we go store profile. And we can get out of there. So now if I come and put my beam, I can come into here, choose my special beam, and just place it wherever we want to place it. And here is our 600 mm diameter red beam. So uh, that's, this is really useful for um, Furniture is another really good thing for this, like bench tops and kitchen cabinetry stuff where you want to make something that's nice and long but it's got the same, same shape throughout so you can um, build up your kitchen cabinet and cross section and then place it as a beam um, on your drawing. Uh, what else? Zone, so this is where we set up the, the zones that we're going to use in the project. And again, these should all be set up ready for you, ready to roll, whichever type of project you're going to use, um, so that you um, just need to grab the zone and place it and manipulate the names and things like that. So we won't, and we, will, we discussed zones the other week, so we won't go into too much of that. Again, it's just a case of just going new, setting up the zone, um, And then setting up things like the um, zone stamp, um, how you want it to show typically when you pull up that zone. So this is quite useful to have all this set up right at the start, which is what we've done now with that template we've gone through and uh, we're setting the zones up in such a way that when you pull up a zone, it only shows the information we want it to show at the particular scales rather than you starting it fresh every time and having to, to work through all these and change all the settings and um, does your head in after a while. So we'll get rid of that one. Um, and then you know, nothing more of importance there. So the other one to remember is the attribute manager. Now, since we're going to be working on a standard template system, uh, one really, really, really important thing to remember is this Hashtag here, the index number. Now, uh, while everything you search for in ARCHICAD tends to, like your fills, uh, lines, layers, everything seems to appear uh, alphabetically, the actual, um, uh, what do you call it, the brains behind the system is this index number. Now, in the great scheme of things, the name means nothing to us when we're bringing stuff into a project because whatever this number here is will determine what happens with whatever we bring into a project. So with our um, master template system, we don't want people just going out and finding a project which we did one year ago, two years ago, 10 years ago, and um, bringing in uh, walls or objects, um, Anything that's any, yeah, anything that's copied and brought into a project will uh, interfere with this um, index number of whatever it is that you brought in. So, you bring a uh, a chair in, say, it'll have within it uh, the layer setting that was used in the previous project. It will have um, materials that are used to show it in 3D. It will have fills that are used to um, determine what happens in cross-section. It'll have lines that are used um, to outline it in cross-section and in 2D. And it, uh, 
And it may sometimes, some objects have a building material that they um, look for. So when you bring this object in, it's going to, um, first of all, look in each of these things. So just say it's a material. Um, maybe this chair is a timber chair. And in the old file, the index number for a timber is 40. So when you bring this timber chair in, it's going to have in its um, parameters uh, material, which is 40, might be you know, oak. But when we bring it into here, it is going to go, what's number 40? It's metal. So it's going to then change the color of that chair to metal. Um, that chair may have been on a layer be called loose furnishings in the previous plan, but loose furnishings may have had a layer number 50, uh, whereas in this one, um, I don't even know see that. interior furniture, it's number three. So what it's first thing it's going to do is it's going to look for layer number 50 and it's going to put that chair on layer number 50 so it's going to put it on the market's elevation layer so you bring that chair in slap it on your plan the first thing it's going to do is then ask if you want to show the layer or choose another layer so um but that's if that layer is hidden but if the layer is actually still there for some reason it will place it on that layer so that when you go to a view set later on where you have hidden the marker's elevation, your chair will disappear and you'll pull your hair out wondering where the hell my chair has gone. Um, you'll do everything you can and then eventually you'll find it when you show all the layers and see it's on the wrong layer. So um, we don't want people just grabbing stuff from a project and bringing it in. The, the best thing you can do if you're going to bring something into a project is um, grab it Um, so just say we grab that chair and we want to bring that into another project we know that it's everything's wrong with it we'd open it up first of all easiest thing to do is put it onto the Archicad layer secondly uh, maybe just uh, take the material and make sure it's say general and then work through the parameters um your fills okay you can they're going to change so you can just maybe leave those put all the pens to one color um makes it easiest same in here go and throw all these to um one one single material when we look at our 3D, it's going to look really weird. Um, and then just, okay, and then copy it and place it in your new model and then go through and make all your changes to the uh, new new layers, materials, things like that. Um, a, it is a pain, but otherwise what happens is um, all these things like... Uh, Layers. So if you, if people are constantly importing stuff, you know, think of the size of the projects that we're working on and the amount of people working on them. Um, and when you place something, so just say you place an object that has a layer that's, uh, it always, if the layer is already taken, if its layer number is already taken as well, it can create a new layer. So and also what it does is if the layer that it's come from has an index number higher than our highest index number, it, it brings it in with that same index number. So um, at the moment this project's got 67 layer index numbers. So you bring something in from a project that had 200 and you happen to bring in layer number 200, it's going to then go the next layer down here will be 200. And then the next time someone brings another layer in, it'll be 201, 203. And then someone happens to bring something in from a project that's had a thousand layers and it goes to a thousand. So then it's a thousand and one, two, three. And once you get to 
25,000 number, which is not hard, um, then it starts throwing all sorts of problems in Archicad itself and the projects to start um, not working properly and crashing and things like that. So we don't want to get back to that stage where we just lose control of, of layers and well, attributes in general. Um, it happened on Silter when we started out with Silter and um, same as Lati. We, we had all sorts of problems and discovered that it was this layer name combination because because we had it, we tripped it somewhere across 25,000. Every layer then was adding onto that, and um, it was a hell of a job to go back through and reconcile everything back to uh, a nice, easy system. Um, now, the way we set projects up as well now with the master template is that we are having a set layer, layer sets, or set, all of our attributes are basically set in a particular way. Um, if you want to add any more, like there are, are ones that we want to add from time to time, don't just go, um, don't just go into the way I just showed you before, if you're on a team project especially, and um, grab here and grab a new, and create a new layer, because all that's gonna do is um, put it, to, it's gonna grab the next index number and create your layer there. So if you've got a file which is, especially say if you're working like Marley Horner or something like that, that's linking to a master file, anything that you create in your template module file is then going to transfer into the next file down the line and if that's linked up to another one it'll carry into that as well. Now if um, the numbers start, after a while they'll start um, not, not coordinating. So say you've put an extra layer in at 250 on your project and on your file and someone else in the master file has gone and put a new layer in which has automatically grabbed 250. When your module file comes in and the next update that they do, there's going to be a problem on where that um, object is found. So anything that was on that layer number 250 in your file is then going to be automatically transferred to whatever the 250 layer was in the uh, host file. So you don't know what it's going to be, so things will start disappearing and drawings won't appear as they're meant to appear. Um, and again, you'll be scratching your head because someone wants it off you in five minutes' time and um, don't know where it is. So best way if you need new layers is to come to one of the BIM managers on a project and discuss it with them first. Um, if you're able to do it yourself and they say and they're happy with you to do it, um, the best to do these things in Attribute Manager. So once we open that up and we have a series of attribute files which we're saving. Uh, I'll find one that I've got here for us. Not for this Dropbox. Ah. So these AAT files, which will be, there are some saved in our master template folder on the on the network. These will contain uh, full sets of attributes for a project. So if a if you need a new layer, you need to come into here and basically. Uh, discuss with the BIM manager what number it's going to have so that we can then coordinate it across all files in that project. So once once we put a uh, layer into a module file of some sort, we need to then put that same layer in, in the same place um, to the host files and every other file that that links up with. So we would then, or you, uh, you us or you, would... Um, 
we can come in here and say we might agree that we're going to go from 150 for your um, layers. So now we, we need to get to 150, which is actually a case of um, just duplicating until we get oh, not quite, until we get there. And then we go to the layer that we want to use, get rid of all the rest. Um, and um, call that whatever we want. So we'll, maybe we've got another need for a, another furniture layer. So we'll call that furniture two. And then we place that into our own attribute file. So this is the, this is the attributes of our master template or whatever attribute file you've pulled it from. And this is our um, attributes that are in our folder at the moment. So now we will then place this across by index number and it retains the right number. Um, if we just appended it, it will take the next number. And if we do it by name, it does, oh, okay. It stays the same as long as they're both free. So, so remember the one that you always want to be using is this index number. Um, and you don't want to just be going and chucking layers in at random without talking to whoever's in charge of the file. Um, you'll annoy someone. So this has got like this file here. <coughs> it's got like all the basic uh, layer combination sets set up. And over time, as we develop new layer combinations through a project that we think are useful, we will add these into the master template so that they can be easily brought into the um, your project file. The beauty of this is that if we if we all stick to the same system, once we uh, send, say, a layer of combination, once we've got it set up and send it across to any project, it automatically finds all the right layers to um, assign to that view set and, and you don't have to do too much mucking around and turning things on and off. Um, that goes the same for all these things, lines, um, whatever else. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you do happen to bring, say, an object in, uh, one good thing to do if, if you've done that object or a wall or anything is um, come into this object attribute manager and look for, uh, first of all, layers. Although if you've put it on the ArchiCAD layer to start with, it shouldn't be a problem, so there should be no more layers created. But if you've just grabbed something and you realise afterwards, oh, I've just grabbed a, an object and I've placed it in the file and I forgot to put it on the right on the ArchiCAD layer, you can come into here and look for um, any layers that have got an underline underneath them, which means that they've just been imported, um, and then you can delete them from there. Same with line types; it's always good to shoot to the end of the lines and see anything that's got either an underline or a number in brackets. Use the number in brackets means that it's been duplicated uh, that many times, so delete those as well. Um, same with the fills, shoot to the bottom of the fills and see what's down there. Um, delete those. And I reckon two bit as well, so you can get rid of those. and any of those that have been brought in that you don't need so to keep it all clean. Um, well, that's a bit of a pain, but it's one of those things that if we don't if we don't stay on top of all that through the project, it's a hell of a mess later on. So keep all that in mind, um, and then you won't have a good manager barking on your back <laughs> telling you what the hell have you done here or um, trying to stop you being able to do stuff. <laughs> So yeah, so that's pretty much um, a simple rundown on attributes and why they're so important. So yeah, um, hopefully that's been useful and that you can understand that. So if you've got any questions with those sorts of things, yeah, just feel free to come and ask. It's 
it's not the most simplest of topics and it does take sometimes take getting your head around I mean we even sit at times trying to work out what's gone wrong with something and how did we manage to um, bring bring that element in or whatever and where's it come from because uh, the other thing too is once you've bought something in you've stripped it all back and you've deleted all the irrelevant layers fills textures um, you quite often find that it should then this will say like missing if you've um, forgotten to change it earlier you know before you moved it so just look for anything that's got a missing um, texture or a missing um, fill or line type and just put those in place and you'll be back away and once and if you do um, bring an object into a project because you're going to use it a few times and you've cleaned it up once you've done it you could then also um, uh, save it as a favorite hold on No, that opens up the favourites. Oh, hold on. So you can add it, sorry. So go up to the favourites, and then you could add it as a favourite so that you've got all the settings already set up and you don't have to um, remember to go and change anything next time. Okay, so, yeah, it's attributes. Thanks all, and we'll see you next week. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. I have a couple of questions. Like... Yep. <laughs> um, is there a way to change?